much. Well, uh, the main new thing in Command and Conquer 3 is the introduction of the alien faction. Uh, we're very excited to be talking about aliens. They have been hinted at in the past two CNC games a lot. Uh, this is the first time that you actually get to see them and play them, and there's actually an entire single-player campaign devoted solely to the aliens, so it's, it's very exciting to finally take the wraps off of the alien faction. Aliens uh, play very differently than both Nod and GDI do. I think the biggest difference that players will find when they get their hands on the aliens is the way that they uh, run their economy. Uh, for example, when they harvest Tiberium, uh, they harvest it um, at a much faster rate than the non GDI, and, and they get more money per Tiberium shard than, than non GDI. But the most important thing is that we don't place a hard cap on the amount of Tiberium that they can harvest before requiring a silo. In fact, the aliens don't require a silo whatsoever. So, um, so in, in the hands of most players, you can be playing the aliens and have uh, you know a bank account of Tiberium that goes in the tens to twenties, thirty thousand dollars. Or more, whereas uh, you know, for GDI and Nod, we we cap that uh, pretty low before requiring you to uh, purchase a silo. So the way that that all balances out with them having more access to finances, uh, uh, basically, is that uh, the alien units, especially the early to mid ones, don't have as much armor as say your typical GDI unit. Uh, they are produced out of their respective resource structure much faster, uh, but one to one, they they can't really uh, go toe to toe like a predator. Now the late game alien unit, especially the, um, uh, the the tripod, the annihilator, and the devourer tank, uh, those are tough. And if you let a player get to those uh, unchecked without having counters like the orcas, for example, uh, then you as a GDI player might be in trouble. Um, one of my favorite alien units is the uh, tripod. Uh, its uh, its actual name is the annihilator, but it resembles the classic tripod from War of the Worlds. And what makes it special is that it has three independently controlled weapons that it can target uh, on its own. Uh, and these are, you know, your classic laser beam. Um, there's nothing more frightening than seeing one of these tripods walk in your base and having it target three different structures or three different units that you were hoping would stand up to it all on its own. And what's more, you can combine the uh, the buzzers, uh, which are a very early game infantry for the aliens. They're essentially like a flying school of razor blades. You can combine them with the tripod, and they'll protect it against any infantry, like the you know rocket troopers or, or anybody that can have uh, that is strong against the tripod. So when you see uh, like three or four of those combined with razor uh, with the buzzers, um, you're in for some serious trouble. Equivalent to the uh, tripod for both Nod and GDI. Uh, Nod has the Avatar Warmech, which is this bipedal robot. The nice thing about this is that it can assimilate a lot of its own units. So if there's a flame tank nearby, it'll go and grab the actual flame tank mechanism, attach it to its arm, and all of a sudden it's a flame spouting uh, Avatar Warmech. It can do the same thing with the stealth tanks and turn stealth. Uh, it can pick up a beam cannon and all of a sudden it has two powerful beam cannons now. So Avatar is a great answer to the uh, alien tripod. Uh, GDI, on the other hand, has a mech that we call the Juggernaut, which is essentially a mobile artillery platform. It can't really go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, either the tripod or the uh, Avatar because it's not really a frontline unit. But when used in the hands of a skilled player, especially when paired with a sniper, the sniper has a special ability to kind of call in long-range artillery using the Juggernaut from, from long distance, then it, uh, it, it, it becomes a potent unit. Command & Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars will be on store shelves on March 28, 2007, and for me, I'm most excited about the return of Kane, the return of Joe Coogan, and uh, the great single-player campaign we have.